wanted to learn disruptive technologies for vertical career growth, getting higher salary and remain always updated then regularly watch and listen trainings. Go to HadoopExam.com and start learning technologies like Hadoop Developer and Administrations, H-Base Developer and Administration, Data Analytics, Spark, Near 5, Python, Scala, AWS Cloud, MS Azure Cloud, Google Cloud, Databases like Cassandra, Oracle, Popular Programming Language Java, Analytics using SAS, Data Science, Machine Learning. There are much more like certification preparations, interview preparations material. Go and visit HadoopExam.com now. Hello and welcome to Hadoop Exam Learning Resources. In this session, we are starting the pre-interview preparation for Apache Cassandra. We would be covering various concepts during all the sessions as well as almost 185 interview questions. So how we would be pro proceeding is like we would first cover some concepts about the Apache Cassandra. Then once in next session, we would be covering around 25 to 30 interview questions. And then again, we go through the concepts and again, we go back to 20, 30 interview question. This would be different interview question. So overall, we would be covering around 185 interview questions during all the sessions as well as various concepts you would be learning. I might use uh, whiteboard sessions during the this concept explanation. Right. So this is like you can use a uh, video come audio book. OK, so one or twice you can watch it, then start listening this uh, concepts and interview question and answer because there is no hands on session we would be doing in this. This is more of a interview preparation material. So what I recommend like before going for an interview, correct? You watch and listen this training carefully twice and most of the questions would be covered for your interview. If we are missing any particular section which is being asked in the interview, uh, then you can send us an email we try to cover that section as well as part of our uh, this preparation material correct every interview is different certainly but your basic concept would be clear and you are able to answer the questions like whatever they are asking it then it would be easy to clear the exam so by using this like uh, it, this would prepare you for the interview correct but does not guarantee you would be clearing the interview correct but we try to uh, make you learn as much as possible so you would be able to answer the questions during the interview okay and with this you can also get around 185 questions in the online version as well if you have access then you can access it so you if you just want to read those questions then also you can read it online correct no need to watch and listen this so you will be having access to video version audio version and online version of the interview questions and answers so before interview listen is twice and thrice that would be uh, helpful for you. Correct. So let's start with the our sessions and then uh, cover the things whatever we have discussed. So uh, I'll be using this PDF during the, our concept learning. Correct. And once this is done, then we go through the our interview question and answer. So let's start. So the first concepts we would be learning here is the normalization. Correct. So it's Cassandra is a database. So you need to know the various concepts about the Cassandra database as well as the normal RDBMS because certainly you would be asked questions about RDBMS, the differences between RDBMS and Cassandra DB, how Cassandra is different kind of thing. Various questions would be asked. So how and, and it may be started with the normalization. Correct. Because this is the main concept where the Cassandra started. Correct. So they, they used to the denormalized data and uh, RDBMS to the normalized data. So let's first just understand what exactly the normalization. Is. I'm sure you have learned this concept during your college time as well. And after that or some uh, during your various interview preparation. But let me re revise this concept because this is specific to database. So using normalization design technique, we reduce the duplicacy in the data. Correct. So suppose you are getting this uh, some this data. Correct. So this data, if you see, this is a denormalized data. Correct. So this data is actually what exactly somebody uh, like entire data of the particular not particular for all the courses subscribed on the hadoopexam.com. So we have a detail stored like which course, who is the user and what is the subscription duration kind of thing. This way we have like various, uh, what I say, data in a single file. So this is this can have a duplicate data, correct? Like a course info is a twice, multiple times. So for each user, you are, are having the course info listed, correct? Similarly, like subscription detail, uh, like for three months, six months, seven months, 12 months, for everything it is repeated. So this increases the volume of data in a single file. So what we wanted to do it, let's normalize it and store it properly in an individual table. So suppose here three things are there. Uh, one is a course. So let's store the course detail in a separate table that is course table where course ID, course name, what is the fee and on which place it can be conducted if it is an offline course, correct? Similarly, user detail. What is the user ID? Which course ID he has subscribed, correct? And what is the name and what is the his gender, correct? So, uh, so now here course ID you can see is a foreign key reference with the this ID. So you don't have to repeat, correct, the same course information for each user. Similarly, subscription detail, like for this course ID, this user has this which is started and ended for the this course kind of thing. So you, so this way you can 
keep the table separate and entire data is denormalized correct so like how much denormalization you want is that that depends up to you and that is called as a normal form correct so you can like just have a one first normal form second normal form third normal form then voice code normal form then fourth normal form and up to sixth normal form you can go correct to reduce the duplicity in your data but there are advantages and disadvantages of doing both the things correct everything like has a pros and cons correct so what is the giving more benefits we would be using that technology for our requirement correct so previously we would not have uh, we would have concern about the storage spaces correct so there is a uh, uh, like storage space was very costly so that's the reason we try to the uh, normalize the data correct and as much as duplicity from the data we can remove it we try to remove it that is a denormal uh, sorry normalization process correct so let me go here so this is the file we have which has duplicate data is called the normal denormalized data and the, uh, we have created separate tables or separate files or uh, you can say this is a normalized data now no denormalization uh, okay so normalization is dividing larger table or removing duplicate data and then create a smaller tables correct so that is what i have explained that is a normalization using the relationship key or foreign key that foreign key not necessarily you would be creating a hard uh, relationship between uh, course id and uh, from user table and course id in course table it can be virtual that's just it has a relationship that you can maintain it and you can just remember it as part of your database design but or if you want it you can create foreign key relationship correct so the, so that you can do in rdbs to link those tables correct so this is how you normalize so there are much more on the normalization but that is good enough for the our customer interview preparation so like you can have normal from first to second correct now let's talk about the advantages of normalization smaller database because you don't want to store the duplicate data correct so it would require the lesser space and redundant data would be removed so it would be like more of a clean data and helps to in easily manage the data and saves the storage space obviously delete the data anomalies if there is any uh, not good relationship is fine or something like your data is uh, not valid kind of thing then can easily be removed from this uh, normalized data and it would be consistent consistent see is a big term uh, for the cassandra database perspective okay so from where the cassandra start getting different from the other available databases so this is consistency is means like whenever you fetch the data correct so what i would say uh, let me write it down suppose some user oh, sorry just give me a moment suppose some user have subscribed uh, let's say his name is amit who had subscribed the hadoop course this id is hadoop correct whatever is the id correct so consistency means like as soon as you write the data and somebody do the read request it should be immediately available to that user like new course is added so that is consistency so there is as soon as transaction is committed on the database and this should be available to read this record so that is what the consistency correct and there is much more with the no sql perspective we'll go through and come back again uh, for that correct now let's disadvantage of the normalization okay so as i told you there are pros and cons for the every uh, things you um, use it correct so to fetch data it may require join the table and affect the overall performance correct so as you remember we have to join between the this course id and user id table correct so there is a this is your course id table correct and this is user id table so if you have to fetch all the users which have subscribed for a particular course id so you what you would be doing join between this course id and this user id table so actually behind the scene your database would fetch this data fetch this data do some operations correct to merge this data and finally give you the result so this you can say this certainly some processing would be happening behind the scene correct which is not visible to you but that happens correct so this causes the delay here correct so this would be introducing some delay here correct and so whatever whether you read it so this is read latency because you are reading the data similarly if you are writing some data like which user has subscribed something or new course is added or something correct so so suppose new course is added so you can obviously that won't affect from other table but new course is added correct so similarly new user has subscribed your course correct so new user has subscribed so when writing the data database has to check oh if it is a hard relationship between whether this course id really exists in this table or not if there is no course id then it would say foreign key constraint there is no parent key found or something for this um, course whatever uh, xyz course you are trying to subscribe but this entry is not there then it can throw error so this is again processing is n word correct so database has to do this processing on your behalf correct so that is would affect that would affect the overall or latency complex query to fetch the data correct so we are talking about now two table correct now in the third table is also in word in overall processing so we also have to join this third table so the processing would complex processing would increases and not only processing increases you have to write the complex queries correct join between like course id and then 
user id table then another join if you have third table like what would say subscription detail correct course id and subscription so as many table is there you have to increase your join conditions your course id and then um sorry not course id user id and then subscription id correct so this way your query complexity also increases correct so that you should avoid this and if you want to avoid avoid uh, then you sorry uh, wrong statement let me move ahead further so and uh, uh, big data loads are not easily supported on this uh, normalized databases correct like for few terabytes like one or one to five terabytes still your this rdbms database like mysql oracles which are normalized database correct db2 sybase etc all are good but nowadays we are talking about the big data your data volume is in hundreds of terabytes to petabytes correct so this kind of volume cannot be easily handled by this normalized data correct so so where uh, this uh, new databases started coming into the pictures and the people started using the, those databases correct so so this no big data is not easily supported correct across geography performance geography performance what does it mean is actually which i have really faced in my real project actually what happens is suppose there is some data stored in a let's say uh, america data center this is data center is in america and your data is stored in the because data center is there, oracle uh, correct data table is oracle database is there and if you are sitting in india you have to fetch the data from this table and then process it certainly uh, if this is computer sitting on the india data center and even if you have to fetch like few thousands of rows it would give you the good amount of delay like millisecond you can see that that is the delay actually like data is delayed but if you do the remote desktop and uh, by sitting only in india and this computer is directly connected to this data center and you fetch the data on a few thousands row so you, it, it would see like there is a quite delay here but this is very quick so this kind of geography differences we are talking about so from which data center you are uh, fetching the data kind of thing so this kind of delay is is there when you do the normalized data why because normalized data has to be in one data center or one one um, generally uh, they, they are not distributed correct so that's the reason uh, uh, they, they sit on one uh, place and everybody fetch from so like this is we are talking about people from america accessing this correct this is people from india accessing it some users from europe accessing this data correct so this way there is also latency so everybody hitting the same data here and it will introduce the latency for each user other than this uh, people will, who are accessing data sitting in the america correct so and updating the data in the obviously uh, normalized would be a uh, problem as i have already discussed with you okay so when do you prefer the denormalized data correct so which we have uh, if all the data which supports this disadvantages then we can use a denormalized data but remember like nowadays we are talking about big data and all this thing so your oracle mysql db2 database is not going to go anywhere they are still preferred database and whatever they can do cannot be done by your no sql databases easily like cassandra whether mongodb or whatever even 95 percent industry uses oracle and mysql databases for their regular transactional data because they are also capable of handling few terabytes of data efficiently and they are keep improving their databases as well so it is not necessary like uh, you would move everything from oracle database to cassandra database that is not at all possible even cassandra admits this like you cannot blindly replace the rdbms with the cassandra db the, these are two different databases they cater different requirements so this is a different database which has uh, the denormalized data which cannot be easily handled by the rdbms can be handled by this new generation of the databases like cassandra db and mongodb kind of thing so let's start this so what if you need lower latency for read and write correct like you don't want to do so much processing or something let's keep your data denormalized okay so let's keep it in one file only read it from that file one file it means i mean one table and read it and write it so lower latency you will get it support for big data loops now i have already discussed about you about this like if you have data more than five terabytes and up to petabytes then go for this no sql data iterative processing like machine learning and deep learning they require your algorithm to be run on the same data again and again and again and again and the volume is data is quite high okay so like in uh, terabytes then it would be preferred uh, process, uh, to use this no sql database data can be retrieved across the geography correct so what i mean here is actually so th this is the scenario correct where we need to get the data across the geography so what you would be doing is actually you will be having three different data centers like all data sitting in the three different data centers let's 
say this is your Europe data center, this is your America data center, this is your India data centers. Correct. So now user from uh, Europe would hit this data centers, user from America would hit this data center, and user from India would hit this data data center. But still, all three are getting the same data. And if they are querying for same uh, course or user subscription detail, they are getting the same data because your data is available on all three data centers. Correct. So whatever course ID hundred is there, so this detail of hundred is available so this is duplicated data okay this is denormalized data which is available across all three data centers correct so this is more of multiple copies of the same data would be uh, available so correct so there are let's say a uh, thousand rows in this table thousand rows in this table and thousand rows. so, so th all three tables are same so that is what the consistency means consist in distributed system correct so this is known as distributed system because your data is distributed across three different data centers but having the same copy of data all data remain in sync so whatever course id subscription 100 course id 100 represent in europe america and india should represent same in all three data center so that is what is known as consistency okay so now let's move it data can be retrieved across geography correct no need to join the data for better performance so avoid the joints and all the stuff because you have duplicated data across the sorry in a single table correct so that is now let's understand some more concepts about sharding what uh, is sharding means and kind of thing correct so people nowadays keeps using this and you may be uh, asked questions about the sharding so horizontal partitioning of the database is known as a sharding what exactly that means so in this case rules of a database tables are stored separately so let's assume it there is a course table which has a 1 million records in it 1 million rows in it what you would be doing in sharding or horizontal partitioning you may be dividing like let's say we are dividing in four parts correct uh, 250 rows in each shard correct so these all 250 rows are different from other sh shard correct so let's assume it 1 million records here so what we are saying 250,000 rows would be going to in India centers 250,000 rows in so correct like this so what here I means like all the course details which are mostly subscribed by the Indian user should remain in the India data centers let's store those into the India data center next if 250,000 rows which are mostly subscribed by the American users let's save it in the America data centers so what in the horizontal partitioning you would be doing actually dividing your big table into smaller table this is not a normalization or denormalization this is purely sharding storing some data on one geography location or some other location kind of thing so that is a sharding correct so you understand correct here so based on your affinity what in which close to which data center you want the data then accordingly you divide the data there is no duplication of the data so because still there are 1 million records but they are divided in different locations so storing single table data across four geography you don't split the columns correct so here in the course table suppose four columns are there still there are four columns in each region in each geography you would be storing but only 250,000 rows from that big table you are storing in the one ge specific geographic location advantage is number of rows in each table correct so in each table is reduced reduce the index size so overall your index size increase the search performance because if i am interested only in indian data then i'll just hit that chart correct so if i'm interested in the american data then i'll hit this uh, this chart correct so this way we can have a like specific data targeted data would be stored in a separate physical location correct so you can logically and physically divide the data in in chart based on the geography correct or there could be other criteria as well so it's one criteria is geography another criteria is time correct in 2019 data i want to store in another shard 2018 data i want to store in another shard or 2017 data so this is the way you want to shard the data so this is one strategy how you would uh, make the your database efficient kind of thing correct so this is sharding is one of the strategy correct so now in case of sharding each database server is identical having same table structure correct data is physically stored in a separate shard correct so that is what the sharding is so that is known as this is horizontal horizontal partitioning so if you divide your big table into the small small chunk and store it based on the different uh, what i say location based on your requirement correct? now next concept is people are getting confused with the partitioning and sharding correct so similarly let's assume it you have a big table which is again has a data across like food geography data but you don't have a different data centers available correct and you have only one data center so what you would be doing here in part you would be partitioning your data so that you can hit a particular partition based on your data requirement so still server is a single correct in the partitioning case in case of partitioning server is single but you would be dividing rows based on the uh, like 
geography or whatever time criteria or something so what i would say india partition would be data will remain in p1 american partition data would american data would remain in partition p2 europe data would remain in partition p3 kind of thing so and uh, this uh, what you can say other data centers oh, sorry other geography data and another partition so now partition here storage is a single in the same data you are dividing in different partition so once your query is hit for indian data so suppose uh, let's assume it if you are writing a query like this select star from course where country equals to india and course id between 1001 and 2000 correct so in this query when database automatically see you in your query it does not look for uh, like something uh you have to define which partition to hit correct so it's the database response okay in the where clause it says india correct so what it would do it would automatically hit the this partition where the india's data resides you know correct and then only do the search for course id 1001 to 2000 in this partition it does not have to even go for this p2 and p3 and p4 correct so that is the advantage of partitioning correct so it is all about single storage server but you internally on the disk data is stored separately based on the geography so that is the partitioning and what is the sharding sharding is, is actually physically you are separating the data and storing into the different location correct so like india related data you are storing in the india data centers your american american users data you are using america data centers so this kind of so this this is what is the difference between partitioning and sharding correct so what we have learned is normalization denormalization sharding and partitioning correct so these are the concepts which would be used and some concept we have covered about the consistency correct so your query or application should determine the correct shard and query accordingly so this is storage engine responsibility in case of oracle mysql storage engine is responsibility which partition to hit correct so that is what the uh, partitioning correct sharding is one alternative to store very large data in a different physical location and then you have to hit particular geography location because storage engine may not automatically hit that particular uh, sharding shard correct you in your application you have to decide like okay i want indian user data i know to i have to go to that data centers and hit that particular shard to get my data so that is your application responsibility to find the particular shard but in case of partitioning storage engine is able to help you like okay when which partition the data will be. so this is transparent to your application correct even while storing it automatically finds like when which partition data should go query performance should be improved with the sharding correct cheaper and lower and machine can be used with the sharding sharding is a process of distributing tables onto different server in order to balance the load correct so this is horizontal partitioning where it it happens on a row wise so you divide the rows and multiple all parts and look and store into the physical location so sharding is a single physical uh, sorry multiple physical servers and they are distributed partitioning is single physical server internally on the disk that is differently stored based on the your partition vertical partitioning like which we already discussed is that normalization is vertical partitioning like you would be uh, storing different columns in the different tables kind of thing like course detail into the course table and uh, user detail is in user table so there's this kind of vertical partitioning generally people don't use this term vertical partitioning this is just you can uh, say it's a normalization okay so sharding and schema change uh, suppose what are the disadvantages actually suppose you have to change the schema detail in the user id column if you want to change or or add one more column like gender correct in user table so what do you have to do you have to go to all four location correct if you have four data in four different data centers and four sharding is done and update the schema information on all four shards correct so that is the disadvantages of joining the data is not possible across the shard it can be done but that is not easily if you want to join the data between um american shard and indian shard correct so that is not easily done aggregation suppose you have to find the minimum uh, course fee across all the geography so what it has to collect the data from all three all four geography and then based on that you have to find the maximum values in it okay? similarly minimum average whatever you want to do it, it it needs to get access to all the data then only it can calculate average minimum maximum etc and that would be very less performant than compared to your rdbms okay? querying data based on the secondary column would hit the all the shards suppose if you are querying based on user id or course id that is fine but you have second indexes created kind of thing correct on this like in user table if you have secondary indexes on the gender or something correct? or age column correct so what a secondary index means actually suppose uh, this is your user table correct let's assume it this is your user table where this is an id uh, okay user id this is course id this is name age and gender correct this way you store the data name is whatever it's like amit okay age is 25 30 35 60 kind of thing this has so this primary index you would be creating that is fine 
you can query this data but this is a secondary index correct or this each is i have created a secondary index on this correct and i have to query the data it is not easily possible because my data is on the different shard as well because i'm not only interested into the indian user or something correct i'm interested across all the shards like with the average is i wanted to find it correct so this is american shard this is indian shard so i need to get access all this data across the geography and to fetch the data correct so this way querying data based on the second index will hit all the shards adding new shard requires normally moving the data from like if you add one shard to existing shards then you would be rebalanced correct and so you would be removing rows from one shards to another shard or if you're removing one shard then you have to from existing shard you have to copy the data into the remaining shard kind of thing so manual failover process and all is happening with the sharding so this is all things which we have learned the basic concept sharding partitioning normalization denormalization so this all we would be learn, uh, requiring for uh, like learning the cassandra database that's the reason i have covered this concept so i hope you like this session thanks thanks for watching and i hope um, if you're watching this session on youtube don't forget to subscribe on youtube uh, we would be keep adding more sessions uh, similar to this for uh, every technology which you currently available on hadoopexam.com okay and this questions and answers you can uh, use it for preparation for your interview and if we have missed particular part and that could be asked in the interview question because things change every day and we try to keep updated as much as possible so please send us an email like this section is not covered and can you please add as part of your interview preparation all your training sessions or wherever like certification preparation okay so recently we have launched the cassandra latest certification material for the developer certification as well as the administrator certification which is conducted by the data stacks correct so around 200 plus questions are available for preparing cassandra certification so one of the most uh, and fast growing database in the nosql world so i would recommend you go through this um, material and uh, learn about the cassandra db there's like few years back oracle dbs requirement was like very high similarly like nowadays nosql database dbs developers requirement is also high so i've seen like many big organizations have started using this database in production environment from like almost four to five years in the production already like even more i would say so that's all thanks thanks for watching and we'll cover remaining parts in the next session thank you i'm stopping now now i would tell you how to check the latest releases and updates on the hadoopexam.com just go to the home page we have recently introduced this new tab or new button you can see releases and updates you click on this it would open a new page there you can see all the new and latest releases are being done by the hadoopexam.com so if you see like we are maintaining history since 2017 okay and now recently we on 16 august 2019 we have done some cassandra interview question release so on this page you can check the updates regularly okay because sometimes what happens we are trying to send an email if you have subscribed on that email it may go on spam folder and you may not able to check the latest releases and updates and even we don't want to spam your email box so uh, we prefer you come on the website check on this page for the regular updates if you have already subscribed for our material if not then you can even check this if you want still want to get the subscription just subscribe on this button put your name and email id and then you can subscribe for email list but we prefer you use uh, this option as well uh, this on hadoopexam.com just go here on the hadoopexam.com and on the home page we have this introduced new button where you can check the latest releases and updates.